My name is Suraj. I am Praful. And we are here to represent India's largest gaming company, Play Games 24-7. And we wanted to share all the pains, all the challenges that we have faced in building a highly concurrent, low latency gaming platform. Our agenda is very simple. We'll first talk about who we are, what we represent. Second, we'll talk about one of our recent product in which we face a lot of issues and challenges. In third, we'll talk about those challenges. We'll, we'll see how Redis helped us solve these problems. So, who we are? We are Play Games 24-7, India's largest gaming company. We have got two distinguished product. The first one being Rummy Circle. It's an online card-based Rummy platform. It's, it's very popular in India. The second product is My11 Circle. It's a cricket-based fantasy platform. People, people come a lot on this platform. This was launched this year, January. We are a pure data-driven company. Every feature, every decision that we take is backed by solid data analysis. And in order to do this solid data capture, analysis, campaigning, we have also created our in-house platform to collect this data, running campaigns, and analyze the data. We are all on AWS now, and we use their services heavily. Now on, we'll talk about our product, which is my Eleven Circle. So it's a cricket-based fantasy platform. We launched this year, January, and what we saw was there was a huge amount of growth in the user base after we launched. And what we are expecting is that in next few months, our user base will grow five times of what we have right now. So this is a clear sign that we'll have to prepare our platform, we'll have to build our platform so that it can scale, it should be fault tolerant, and a low latency is a must. Now here we have used two words. One is cricket and another is fantasy. How many of you know cricket, by the way? Oh, fair amount. Okay, so I would uh, briefly tell you what is cricket. So cricket, uh, like any other game, is a game which is played between two teams. They compete against each other to win. And it's more like baseball where one team is batting and the other one is fielding first. So the team who is batting tries to score as many runs as possible in a given uh, over, over range. And uh, after that, the team who was fielding first tries to chase those many runs. And the team who is scores most wins. Now let me talk about what is fantasy gaming. So actually in cricket you have actual players playing on the field, a game is going on in a live cricket stadium. And you are sitting on, on a corner of your house and uh, you, want to, you want to also participate in that game. So what do you do? You create your own fantasy virtual team out of favorite players across the teams playing. And then that makes your team. And what do you do with that team? So that team, with that team you join some of the contests that are hosted inside the matches. And in those contests a lot of teams are joining and they are competing against each other. So how is the scoring done? Whenever a player, let's say, hits some run, takes a wicket or does any particular action on the playground, that is directly reflected in player's points. The, that player is given some points. And if that selected player is in your team, then your team also gets points. And that's how the scoring is done. So I'll take you through the team creation. Let's say you had the teams, team red and team gray. You chose your players. Now this is your team. You can have multiple teams of your own. And this is how My11 Circle is actually game of cricket plus fantasy gaming. So let me brief you about the phases of any fantasy game. So phase one is the registration phase. In the registration phase actually users are actually creating teams and joining contests. And the phase two comes when the actual match starts. When the actual match starts no more teams are uh, allowed to join and no more users are allowed to create new teams or update their teams after this point of time. And at this point, actual gameplay happens on the field. And for each ball balled, we need to calculate scores for each of the teams per contest basis and we need to generate, regenerate leaderboard on every ball and we need to publish this information to all the connected users uh, who have joined that contest. 
and after the uh, match ends on the on the basis of leaderboard leaderboard ranks people get prize so this is typically the team creation you uh, you select your favorite players you see a team preview and you can see, uh, see the list of your teams and then here you can have the list of matches and inside a match you can see all the contests that are hosted if you drill down to a contest you can see all the teams that has joined in the screen third which is the leaderboard screen and you can join the contest as well and a team can join multiple contest uh, there is no limit to that and in the as, as i said when the actual ball happens this is how uh, your team's score reflect and thus the leaderboard is updated and finally the prize distribution so we we just ran through all the phases of a fantasy cricket game now let's talk about the numbers that we are looking at in the first phase where our users come and create their fantasy team and join contest we are looking at 5 million such fantasy teams creation 500k distinct contest can be there a contest team join pair can be of 10 million in size the largest contest can be of 4 million in the second phase which is which is very critical and hot phase because whenever a ball is happening on the field we are supposed to calculate score prepare leaderboard and send the updates to connected users so in this phase which is happening on each ball that is played on field we need calculation for 10 million contest team player pair we need to store leaderboard which is a roughly 15 million writes to redis the largest leaderboard size can be of 4 million so these are the scale that we need and remember that whatever numbers i just told you it's for one match but in reality on our platform there can be 10 to 15 matches running at a given single time so think of the scale that we are talking about so we need to build a mechanism which can horizontally scale pretty well give fault tolerance low latency so we have jot down five broad requirements that we have and if we fulfill this we'll be able to create a good system so we need a proper distributing distributed caching with low latency we need concurrent writes and reads to achieve consistency we need mechanism of transactions we need some data structure which can support large leaderboards and leaderboards and large number of leaderboards we need some mechanism to distribute tasks among various application nodes that we have so uh, let's drill down to our first requirement distributed caching with low latency what happens when a, no, normally what users do on our platform is they will uh, want to uh, see the matches available they would uh, like to see the contest available they would like to see their own created teams their own joint contest and uh, sort of this information so it definitely suggests that uh, we need as as we are talking about a large user base and the uh, a large user activity uh, we need some caching mechanism and that too it has to be distributed at this all cannot be served by a single application server so what we need we need support for 150000 per second reads to get match and contest details we need support for 15 million score writes leaderboard updates and reads in less than 10 seconds also if we are caching all this information as we are caching the user data we cannot have it for uh, forever we have to get it evicted so we need time based eviction of cached items as well so now let me talk about how redis helped us here so redis being a single threaded application it actually uh, allows us to easily uh, distribute the cache and uh, use use the cache in a distributed manner actually and it being an in memory store it actually gives very low latency at the scale we needed also redis sharp helps us distribute data in uh, very uh, acro across the nodes and actually automatically distrib distributing the user traffic as well at redis level also redis ttl gives us easy eviction policy and lrio eviction policy to make optimal use of memory let's see some metrics here so here we have attached the api graphs of uh, performance graphs of few of the apis which are backed by redis the vertical scale here is in milliseconds you can clearly see at the scale we talked about we would easily able to achieve double digit millisecond latency for the scale we needed 
So this is how Redis helped us achieve distributed caching with low latency. The next requirement that we had was how do we handle concurrent writes and reads? But let's, let's take a step back and see why we got into a case of concurrent writes and reads. So whenever the cricketing board declares a match or schedules a match, he tells few things. He tells venue date and time of that match. He tells which all teams will be playing and both the teams are supposed to declare their 15 men women that might play on the field that day. That means when match is scheduled, we are talking about 30 men women that might play on the field. But in the game of cricket, the number of players that will play actually on the field is 22, 11 from each side. So there has to be a point in which from the set of 30 players, the final 22 playing players will be selected. So this point is called the toss point. This, this toss point happens 30 minutes prior to match start. So if the match start is happening at 1900 hours, toss will happen at uh, 1830, 1830 hours. This means that our users who have already created their teams, who might have chosen players who will not, who's not going to play today, they need to come and edit and remove such players because they are not going to give him any points. So in this brief window of 30 minutes, what we see is that a lot of update calls, create team calls, a lot of users just wait for toss to happen and then only they create their teams. Then we see a lot of join contests, et cetera, within this 30 minute brief window. So that means we need some mechanism of handling this concurrent write and read with respectable consistency. So what we need here, we need a mechanism to handle 150K reads and writes per second. We tried MySQL select for update, which is a locking mechanism, but that killed the throughput at scale that we needed. The, uh, the MySQL IOPS were so, so high. How Redis helped? Redis is an in-memory store. It's, it's a single threaded store, writes data on a given shard in a sequential manner. So if all my requirements, if in all my requirements I shard based on things like contest ID, user ID, team ID, then all the writes and reads will happen sequentially at that shard level. This means I was able to handle requests in concurrent manner in consistent way at the cache layer. Let's talk about some metrics now. So as you can see, the match start timing is 1900 hours. The toss timing is 1830 hours. The, this 30 minute window, you can clearly see that our usual traffic has increased many folds. So this is the place where we need some mechanism to handle concurrent writes and reads and Redis has helped a lot in this 30 minute window. Now, as we are using two data stores, one is cash layer and one is a persistent store, definitely we need a mechanism to maintain transactions and uh, uh, maintain consistency between the data in these two data stores. So that is a classic use case and you can, th that can be easily solved using um, MySQL transaction and Redis Lua scripting. But here let me list down some of more specific use cases for us like handling new user requests. So imagine a, imagine a new user is coming to our platform and he wants to see all the teams that he has created for a match. As he is a new user, we don't know him. Now we will definitely go to cache. And what we will find? He has not created any team. What we will do? We will go to DB next. In DB as well, we won't find anything for him. And we will uh, eventually return him an empty list. This is going to keep on happening until the user actually creates a team for that particular match. But this, uh, this, this we cannot afford. Every time going to DB for finding new user and uh, believe me, uh, normally that is what going to happen in, uh, uh, that is going to be uh, the case with most of the users who are just going to come into your platforms, go to some screens and just go back. So we need a mechanism to solve this. So what we thought of that once we get a miss from database as well, what we are going to do is we are going to put a default indicator in cache. Let's say in, in Redis we have added a default indicator. But this brings us to another consistency problem. What if 
this the same uh, when I was going to add a default indicator that this user doesn't have a team. The user is a, has actually created a team and my another thread is going to just write that T1 is the team for this user. Now these two threads have to be synchronous and these two uh, and, and consistency has to be maintained here. So with the, with the help of Redis, we could easily solve this problem using Lua scripting rather than these two statements directly going to Redis, they could invoke a Lua, Lua script directly and in the Lua script we could do a conditional write. This is one of the, one of the use cases that I talked about. Another use case would be when a cache item, cached item is evicted from the cache. You will definitely as it is backed by DV, it, is be, it, it will be reloaded from database. At the same time, the same data structure can be modified by another user action. Both of these are not in our control. So definitely the same solution helps here as well. So here I have told you a uh, couple of use cases but there are many other use cases uh, with, uh, which were easily solved by using power of Redis uh, combined with Lua like event sequencing, event deduplication, etc. Let's talk about another beautiful use case requirement that we have and that was preparing leaderboards. So leaderboard is some black box in which you store scores and you expect it to give rank based leaderboard. So uh, in a given single match, we can have 500 different contests and for each contest we'll need one leaderboard. That means we need some way of preparing 500k distinct leaderboards and each leaderboard can grow up to 4 million in size. Now this phase is beautiful because whenever a ball happens on the field, we calculate score, we prepare leaderboard and we send the updated score and rank to the end connected user. Now all of this happens for each ball that is played on field. In the game of cricket, the time gap between two balls is 30 seconds. The average time gap is 30 seconds. So that means we only have 30 seconds to complete our job of score calculation, leaderboard updation and connect, send, sending the updated score and ranks to the connected users. And this is what the ultimate selling or the distinguishing point of our product as well. Our USP is that for each ball, we give live score and ranks to the end connected users. This help us keep up the user stickiness and their adrenaline rush also gets high. So what we need here, so we needed to prepare 500k distinct leaderboards. These leaderboards can grow up to 4 million in size. To solve this, we used Redis sorted set. So we have 500k distinct sorted sets. They can grow up to 4 million in size. Now we have sharded this sorted set based on contest ID. This means for a given contest ID, all the entire leaderboard for that contest ID will reside in a single node. And sorted set has beautiful commands like Z count and Z range with which you can get the rank of a given score. If you want to give, if you want to send the paginated leaderboard, you can use Z range command to paginate the leaderboard and show it to the client. Let's talk of some numbers. The first metric here is how much time we take to write a leaderboard in Redis. So this graph here, we were able to write 15 million items in Redis for both sorted set and key value pairs within 11 seconds. The second metric here is our end to end ball processing time. This means that whenever a ball happens on field, we calculate score, we prepare leaderboard, we send to live connected users and all of this we are able to do in 28 seconds. So we have a room for 30 seconds we are able to do within 28 seconds. So this is how Redis sorted set beautiful data structure has helped us prepare large leaderboards and large number of leaderboards. Another use case in the distributed environment would be task distribution. So we need to distribute tasks among application servers. Now what we could do is we could, we could allocate the task beforehand to the application servers when the match is going to start and, uh, and shard the task per application server. But this brings maintenance overhead of resharding and rebalancing uh, the task if an uh, application server goes down or a new one gets added. So how Redis helped us here? We add the task IDs to a list, to a Redis list and 
uh, each node, each application server goes to the task list, pulls out a batch of data as well as updates the index of uh, the, the position of uh, the index. And all of this done is done in a transaction using Lua scripting. So the next node will put, pull a batch from the updated index. This way we could achieve task distribution in sub-second latency using Redis and Lua scripting. So all of the requirements that we had for scale that we needed, some, somewhere or the other Redis played a very important role in them. Using Redis, we were able to achieve 150K per second reads, 15 million writes. We were able to handle 150K per second concurrent reads and writes. We were able to achieve consistency using transactions provided by Lua. We were able to prepare large leaderboards and large number of leaderboards using sorted sets that supported 15 million writes within 11 seconds. Using Redis list, we were also able to achieve task distribution. So overall, the bottom line here is that Redis, its beautiful data structures, elegant commands to work with these data structures, plus the power of Lua scripting becomes a very powerful combo. And it has helped us solve a lot of use cases that we discussed here and a lot more that we didn't discuss here. So this is all we had. Thank you so much. Thank you.